spoilers ahead for Spider-Man 3.3. We'll get into this. So, with Spider-Man's identity now revealed, Peter asks Doctor Strange for help. When a spell goes wrong... <clears throat> when a spell goes wrong, huh? Doctor Strange just fuck it up? No. Peter was being a child. Anyways, dangerous foes from other worlds start to appear, forcing Peter to discover what it truly means to be Spider-Man. It's a good description, other than the fact that Doctor Strange was trying to help this kid, and he's just like, Hey! I don't want... This girl to forget, or or my buddy, or that dude that was banging my aunt. It's like, <laughs> really? What about so what about my next door neighbor? What's going on? I was too busy being confused because they just said they can't time travel. So it, the idea is that it just wipes people's memories. But like, what happens to like all to like the videotape? Like like if like if someone has a VCR <laughs> and they record John Jameson saying Peter Parker Spider Man. Yeah, or what about so, the fucking broadcast he had to the world? Yeah, yeah, like, <laughs> like even if you erase everyone's memory, someone would be like, "Isn't it?" Hey, uh, guys, I just rewatched this old uh, John Jameson thing because YouTube shows me videos I watched last week as my recommended, and I didn't remember watching it, but like the link it said I had watched it because you know that's how that's how YouTube works, and it says that Peter Parker's Spider Man. Is anyone else from uh, have their mind wiped and then? It would be on the news like do 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 do. Turns out everyone forgot about Peter Parker being Spider Man, but then like you know videotapes exist, and by videotapes I mean YouTube. YouTube, yeah. Or like you know the thumb drive that you know the podcast is stored on, whatever. Like if it's not changing everything else, what happens to like Aunt May has all these conversations in her life where she's talking to Peter Parker as Spider Man. Does she just like? <laughs> I don't understand the premise of the movie. You know how I thought they were going to get around it is so fast forwarding Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire in this movie, both of which are Spider-Man. I thought it was going to be like, oh, Peter, there he is. He's Spider-Man. But then Spider-Man swoops by. You know what I mean? I thought it was going to be a really easy way out of it. But no, it's memory wipe. Yeah, I mean, I just I don't understand the. I don't understand the core premise of the movie. And so <laughs> I, I I mean, I know that like Peter was interrupting Dr. Strange and I know they had to come up with some way for the spell to be messed up. I think it's weird how he was so mad at Peter for not thinking of um like ways to get into MIT after the fact, even though I feel like MIT isn't the main issue there. It's the issue. Like, I feel like the main issue is that people are throwing rock, throwing rocks through your aunt's window. I feel like, yeah. you know, a brick through the window is a bigger deal than, you know, not going to MIT. He knows the Avengers. I feel like someone has the connections to get him in there. Like he he's literally the the heir apparent for Stark Industries. How is he struggling at all? The, where is everything else in the universe? Like he's in the Avengers in this movie, right? He's, he's he's in the Avengers. This is also just strictly from memory. But in the first Iron Man movie from 08, Tony Stark graduated from MIT as the valedictorian or whatever. Yeah. At the age of 17 or whatever the fuck. And then goes back to it, I believe, in one of the Avengers movies, Civil War, possibly. He offers everyone scholarships so that they can fund their like crazy ideas. Yeah, I think Tony Stark, even though he's dead, would have some sort of pull to yeah, be able yeah, to. We, we, we're near the inheritor <laughs> of Tony Stark. <laughs> yes. You couldn't call then him Pepper you get Potts. Into, you then know? you get into MIT because there are five Stark buildings at MIT in this universe. Yeah. And all of the like coolest inventions of the last four years have been because of Stark's money. It just falls apart. Like, okay, if everyone finds out that Bruce Wayne is Batman, Batman isn't unemployed. He's still Wayne. He's still got Wayne Industries. Oh man, Batman, you got to kick you out of your house now. You're homeless. Like, what the fuck's going on? You're. Yeah. I mean, Peter Parker is still a super genius with connections to like the world military. Yeah, and Batman's like, uh, you know that mansion up on the top of the hill that has its own fucking cemetery? Yeah, that's mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's he's probably this is going to like this is going to undercut my like I I am of the opinion that like the Tom Holland Spider-Man movies are mm -hmm. better than than the other ones because it really bothers me that everyone is 37 years old in the Spider-Man movies and he's a high school. Like if Spider-Man was like a used car salesman with a comb over, yeah, having an older guy as Spider-Man makes sense. Like you can do adult Spider-Man, I'm okay with that. But when you have someone going to high school looking like they're about to audit the high school, but instead right. they get into a fight with Flash Thompson or whatever. 
I'm just, I'm just, I'm struggling with it. Like, oh, I can't get ready for school. Like, you're 32. Uh, Toby Maguire was 27 during Spider Man, the first one. He was. Uh, he's not a young 27 either. Andrew Garfield was 29. Tom That's Holland is 25 now. right now. Tom Holland Tom is a young 16 year old. <laughs> Tom Holland seems like he's 14 still. How good was William Dafoe in this though? Like he fucking oh killed God. it. I don't remember liking him that much in the Tobey Maguire movies. Maybe I was just too busy wondering why he's pretending Tobey Maguire is a teenager. Yeah, we. I just recently listened to our old Spider Man one right before this, and we we gave him a lot of props. Okay, yeah. So, so I mean, William Dafoe always the best villain. Let's just <laughs> absolute star. The dude is unbelievable. Like made Jamie Foxx look even worse than he does normally. In this <laughs> now, I like Jamie Foxx. I do not like Jamie Foxx in the Marvel Universe. You ain't even the hotness. Like, no, Jamie, no, you're not. Yeah, Jamie, you're supposed to be playing Electro. You're not supposed to be playing Jamie Foxx with armor. <laughs> Fucking asshole. This is Jamie Foxx on the on a green screen. Nope. Incorrect, sir. I still can't get over how Willem Dafoe, I know he's an actor, but mm -hmm. how good he is between his two personalities. Like how much different his voice is, his mannerisms, his face. As we mentioned before, Peter's trying to get everyone's memory erased except for like a handful of people. It fucks up the spell and that brings enemies from other universes in. But yes. the trick is yeah. it's enemies who have died in other universes. No, it's it's people. No, those guys have died because uh -huh. everyone who fights Peter Parker just ends up killing themselves. Yeah. Uh, in an amazing coincidence. But there are people who are alive who get pulled in. Peter Parker's the, the Peter Spider-Man doesn't die in any of his movies. No, the the enemies was what I was yeah. saying are the ones that are all the enemies that get pulled in dead. I believe so. <laughs> I don't remember what happens to Electro, but uh, Sandman does. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Electro does die. So it pulls a bunch of enemies forward. And uh, Dr. Octopus is the first one to show up. So Peter's trying to get his buddies back into uh, he's trying to get his buddies into MIT because they were denied because he's they're associated with Spider-Man, who's an alleged murderer. So they capture Dr. Octopus because he takes some of Peter's nanotech from the suit. But uh, Iron Man gave him mm -hmm. and Peter's able to take control of it. So. The object here is to capture all of the villains by scouring social media and stuff, which makes sense because mm -hmm. douchebags can't put their fucking phones away. They're all going to go to Happy's house right after they capture them all. Pe yes, because uh, remember the um, the billions of dollars that are associated with like, you know, I mean, he's, he's got a seventy five billion dollar suit, but like no extra house or connections right. to, you know, Stark Industries. Yeah. Or the fucking Avengers. <laughs> oh, and Daredevil's in this, but he only shows up like one time to help. Like, so he's helping, but only from the legal sense. That was an applause. Daredevil's the lawyer. They don't know he's Daredevil. And a brick comes through the window and he catches it without looking. Oh, uh, how did you do that? I'm a good lawyer. <laughs> that was the first applause of the movie. Did you get an applause for that one in, in your theater? I don't think so. Wow. Disrespect of Daredevil. I guess I couldn't hear it over me applauding for Daredevil. Yeah, right. After capturing everyone, Doctor uh, Doctor Strange wants to send everyone back with this magical box of contained spells box. he has. And yeah, Peter so it's wants containing to the spell, but it's set. still going off. But he's gotten it so he can push a button. He can just toss that box around. The button will never get pushed, even though it like tumbles down a flight of stairs. <laughs> right. Peter wants to save them instead because he re he finds out that they all die. So sending them back would just send them to death. They go to Happy Hogan's house, which is Iron Man's sidekick from all the other movies. Peter's spider sense going off and he's looking around to try and figure out who it is. And of course, it's our favorite Willem Dafoe as the Green Goblin. I love his Green Goblin voice. It's so yeah. good. Peter. And the motherfucker kills Aunt May with his glider. It would have been kind of stupid if it didn't kill her because she's older she's like in her 50s or whatever and that thing straight up just took her ass out yeah so it seems like she like um took 
Like he was standing around for a while, and I guess Sp- Peter's spider sense can't detect a gushing wound. It's like there's right. a whole bunch of blood after that, and I'm like, if only you had like a superpower, you can get into a hospital really fast. But yeah. no, they just she just they have a conversation while she's bleeding out. Um, uh, you know, PSA: if you're you know you have a gushing wound, put some pressure on it and go to the hospital. Don't have a last moment. Did you find this movie to be funny? It had it was. About, I would say, a little below average for Marvel humor. I, I generally enjoy the humor in Marvel movies. This yeah. one, it had its moments. It, it had its yeah. moments. It wasn't as funny as the crowd thought it was. The crowd right. was losing their shit at how funny I, it was. I did like the banter between the three Spider Men and yeah. uh, especially Andrew Garfield kind of being like all emo and shit. <laughs> but so Ned has Doctor Strange's ring thing that creates the little portals or whatever. And he's like, oh, show us where Spider-Man is because uh, Tom Holland disappears after Aunt May dies. And Spider-Man comes through and it's like, uh, okay. Takes off his mask, it's Andrew Garfield. They do it again after making him prove <laughs> that he's Spider-Man. <laughs> the, the, thing, the funny thing the funny was like he was hanging from the ceiling. <laughs> Yeah, and she's like, crawl around. I'm not going to crawl around. And Ned's grandma or whatever is like asking him to get the the thing that annoyed me about her is she speaks English, but she just didn't want to or whatever. I hate when that happens. If she can't speak English, fine. But she just could didn't whatever. But Ned's translating for her like, hey, can you get the cobwebs out of the corner? <laughs> it's pretty great. And they pull another Spider-Man through, which is Tobey Maguire. Uh, they go and find Tom Holland. He's laying on top of the roof. They don't say where it is, but it's the same spot that him and uh, what's her face? Michelle. What's the girl's name? MJ. They call her MJ, but she it's like, oh, it's her not name's Mary Jane. M- it's like Michelle, Jennifer, whatever. And it's really confusing because sometimes Peter's like, oh, it's MJ Watson. And she's like, no, my name is Michelle Jones or whatever. Yeah. Anyways, Peter's girlfriend they were laying up there. She knows where he is. And that brings us to the final scene, which is at the Statue of Liberty. They're going to lure all the villains. There's a lot of construction around the Statue of Liberty because they're adding Captain America's shield to it, which I thought was awesome. Yeah, I don't think I want to add a Captain America shield to the Statue of Liberty, but that's just me. If you want to put it on like the Lincoln Memorial, I'm down with that, but not on the Statue of Liberty. <laughs> He's not raising an arm, though. You can like it, it could be like sitting next to him or something, but like I don't think the Statue of Liberty needs a fucking shield. Yeah, <laughs> she's in a gown with a torch, right. shield or torch. You don't have both. I'm gonna yeah, defend it's... myself from arrows while I'm burning a house down. No, it's not how it works. <laughs> Put the uh, shield in the other hand instead of the book. There you go. Yeah, so they're putting so... Captain America shield on the Statue of Liberty, and of course they knock the shield down because it's a Marvel movie, and you have to destroy some stuff. The idea is that they want to cure all the villains there's this cool action scene you know with them trying to stick everyone use the cures that they spent time in the lab you know putting together i mean i know he's a super genius but like if it was that if you could just knock it out in an afternoon with three people yeah then like it makes all the other movies kind of dumb like oh why didn't we do this when we had those you know long drawn out movies (laughs) Yeah, there was a point where Tobey Maguire says that he can cure Green Goblin because he's been thinking about it for years. So in this world, it it actually has been a long time since Green Goblin died. Maybe yeah. that's why he looks the same and Toby's older. But that's why, because the technology's in whatever. I guess that's the way out of it. Did you spend the entire, like the whole scene where like the villains are in Happy's house, did you spend the whole time thinking... They really should, like, have some handcuffs on or something. Like, I mean, I get that, like, they're cooperating right now, but they're they're supervillains who tried to murder people. I really feel like maybe (laughs) keep them in the cage while you're doing your science stuff. It's just a thought. Like, hey, guys, I'm going to go and do some science stuff, and then I'll come back with the cures. So you wait here because you tried to murder me, and I'll go cure you. I'm not just going to have you wander around my Aunt May's house, uh, around my Aunt May. (laughs) It's it's literally less than a day since since someone tried to murder you. (laughs) And you're like, oh, hey, come stand next to my aunt. That's just me. Yeah, there was a point during this final scene that really annoyed me. And I'm sure you can guess what it was. 
But Andrew Garfield, after they subdue Electro, is talking to him. And Jamie Foxx is like, yo, Playa was good, shouty, and all that shit. And I wasn't sure if it was a Jamie Foxx thing or a Disney thing. But you can't. You We almost slid out of this movie without a race thing. Almost. Two and a half hour movie. If you cut out one minute of it, we would have gone without. He's like, yo, Playa. I was thinking you was a black dude because you was helping the homeless or whatever. There's got to be a black Spider-Man somewhere. I don't know. It just really fucking annoyed me because the whole movie, I really enjoyed this movie. And I just, I can't do the Jamie Foxx shit. We talked about that a bit earlier, but he's just like, you know, doing his thing. They cure all the villains with little help from Doc Ock, who... They found one of those in, or they created one of those inhibitor chips while they were still inside of Happy's uh, apartment mm-hmm. and were able to. So if you guys remember from the original Spider-Man 2 from 04, the inhibitor chip was what kept him in control of the arms. When they had that, uh, what was it like a presentation for the new sustainable energy source or whatever, it like shorted out and he was never able to fix it because the arms were in control and no one could get close to him to fix it because the arms were in control yeah why were the ai arms evil to begin with like couldn't he have programmed a not evil set of ai arms maybe maybe when they were baby arms they were in an an abusive home i I had to (laughs) they didn't really want to work because they did because they didn't have the you know the American work that because the, the, these are European <laughs> arms. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, you know, they kept on trying to go on strike and they wanted coffee breaks. I'm like, you don't even drink coffee. <laughs> and they're like, it's the principle of it. Viva la revolution. And he's like, well, no, That's we right. so, so I had to taser them for like 20 years <laughs> in a time dilation chamber to torture them into being able to work. Just the the idea of the arms having a Napoleonic revolution just really tickled my fancy there for some reason. Also funny that it tickled your fancy. <laughs> I'm, I'm very fancy and it's ticklish. Spider-Man wants Doctor Strange to reverse the spell. This is after a cool uh, situation where Peter kind of loses his mind over his Aunt May and tries to murder Norman Osborn. But yeah. Tobey Maguire stops him. It was the lizard that had the green gas that was the cure, but his was an injection. So Peter stabs him in the neck with it. There's such a, a lot of like funny little banter lines and stuff. I didn't want to write them all down because... Even though we're going through this, it's still worth watching, in my opinion. He wants Doctor Strange to do the spell because, like, time and space are shattering. And Doctor Strange is standing on top of the Statue of Liberty or floating above it or whatever, mm-hmm. trying to keep all the portals closed. And then still there's don't a, understand how a mind wipe spell would open up portals. But if you can let go of that, it's probably a pretty good movie. But my God, yes, I, I let go of it pretty quickly. But he does like that time that like there was a major villain in Dragon Ball Z that was angry that Goku cried as a child. (laughs) Broly. Yeah. (laughs) A whole movie driven by a simpering infant. (laughs) Yeah. Crying babies are annoying. I get I get it. (laughs) They destroyed. They destroyed a galaxy because he was kept up from his nap. And the galaxy is on Orion's belt. (laughs) (laughs) The movie has a lot of movie is. It's basically Marvel movie number 75. Everyone that was dead is now alive again. All the characters you know and love have a co-starring role. But also the plot is just extra dumb. I liked it, though. It's a very, very entertaining movie. And I did not expect to because I did not like the first two Tom Holland movies. At the end, they show Tom Holland in the classic Spider-Man suit. The one everyone knows, the one from the comic books and the cartoon and all that. So is he Spider-Man now? Is he graduated from Spider-Boy to Spider-Man? In my opinion, it's the best Tom Holland has been as Spider-Man by leaps and bounds. It seems like he's doing, you know, he, he's forced to to make bigger decisions than whether or not to ask Flash Thompson to go to the, what the fuck was it? The spelling bee or whatever with him. Jesus Christ, that was a thing, wasn't it? They go to <laughs> yep. They go to Washington <laughs> D.C. for. A... Oh my God. Anyways, I was concerned about too much because they kept talking about all these villains they were going to have, and that's part of what butchered the first third movie, the Tobey Maguire third movie. A lot of fan service, bringing back the villains, popping Daredevil in there for five minutes is fan service. 
So great job there. Minus 0.5 points for Jamie Foxx's bullshit. At least he wasn't like a blue monster like he was in the first one. Just just Google really quick what he looked like. Jamie Foxx's Electro. He looked kind of, like what you want to watch is the scene where the electricity fixes his teeth. Remember that? Remember when the electricity fixes his teeth? Yeah. <laughs> Fucking terrible. <laughs> when I typed up these notes yesterday, it was through the end of Friday. So the end of December 17th, the movie had made one hundred sixty five point one million dollars worldwide. As of right now, this moment through noon on a Sunday, Worldwide has made five hundred eighty-seven million opening fucking weekend. So how, how does this um? How does it compare to like uh, Shang Li or whatever? Because I, I feel like this one was like I've I've never seen the theater that packed. Like they had like a bunch of showings for the Spider-Man movie, and the line to the concessions was halfway through the lobby. Ridiculous. Uh, four hundred seventeen million right now worldwide Shang Chi and. Spider-Man already has 587 million opening fucking weekend. Eternals 399 million. So opening weekend, it's blown the other ones out. Okay, so what I'm going to do, there are just shy of 150,000 ratings on IMDb for a 9.1 out of 10. 9.1. That is way up there. Um, I'm going to give it an 8. I really enjoyed this movie. I don't think that I have much to complain about other than... What we've already gone through. What do, where do you sit? I'm 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 probably gonna give it like a seven. It was not my it wasn't it wasn't my favorite Tom Holland Spider Man movie, but I mean it wasn't bad. Like you kind of have to put up with dumb plots in Marvel movies. Yep. And I feel like I could have enjoyed a lot more if I could have gotten over that. <laughs> but I just couldn't get over it. Just out of curiosity, what is your favorite Tom Holland Spider Man? I think it's the one where he fights the Vulture. Maybe. Oh, that's I the first get- one. Yeah, I was like, oh, finally, Spider-Man isn't older than me in high school. It just, it really bothers me how old Peter Parker is in high school. Like, the cops should do something about that. I wonder if what they'll do is have another situation where uh, Thanos Jr. comes in with the Infinity 2 gauntlet and snaps everyone away. That way Tom Holland can, like, travel backwards in time and will do his freshman year again for the next movie. I'm really hoping. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you lost me. I have no idea what you're talking about. Thanos I'm just so Jr. sick of high school Spider-Man. Just if, oh. if we're going to go to college, just put him in fucking college for Christ's sake. All right. I okay, got so at the else. end of the movie. He decides to not like he, he for plot reasons. They erase his memory. He promises to go and hit on his girlfriend again. And they never even discuss how awkward it is to go and just like profess your love to someone who doesn't know you exist. But he still makes a promise to at least talk to her. And she's like. And he just decides to get some coffee instead. I guess he's not leaving New York. He's like, actually, actually, Spider-Man was, is a genius the whole time. This is he, he was actually planning on breaking up with MJ the whole time. He just couldn't figure out how to do it. He's like, like man, I'm going to college next year. I can't be doing this. Yeah, you, you, you got to You can't <laughs> like just you can't go with your girlfriend to, to college. That defeats the whole purpose of growing. <laughs> he doesn't even try to talk to her like is in that one scene. The entire movie's undone. Like, oh, you know, actually, now that I think about it, I don't want to go out with my girlfriend anymore or talk to my best friend. I've decided to ditch both of them. The driving force of the movie is he wants his friend is he wants his friends to know that he's Spider-Man. Correct. And then he just changes his mind. When yeah. did he change his mind? Like, I, I really could have used a conversation time. with Doctor Strange about why he's deciding to just ditch all of his relationships. <laughs> He doesn't, I mean, who does he have left now? Aunt May's dead. Happy doesn't know he exists. Ned doesn't know he exists. Uh, check out Spider-Man Far From Home. <laughs> or what is it called? No Way Home? Far From no Home Way is home. the other yeah. one. Far From Home is the other movie that was not good. No. No.